Space, space. I am the DX21, Day Son Emmanuel, and this is the 5% of the Agenda. Uh, this is our first episode, and with us we have the great Malachi Knowledge God of Law, aka Cause, Power of Law. How are you today? Peace. Everything is everything. How are you? I'm all wise and civilized. First of all, tell us something about yourself. Who uh, I understand that this is not your first association with a major project. You give us a little, just a taste of your background and I understand that you were at one time involved with the music industry and you also have been pivotal as far as hip hop journalism and black political journalism as a whole. Yeah, yeah you know, um, in regards to professionalism, I've been writing in the Amsterdam news for going on Nas Wisdom years and mostly covering social political issues, cultural issues, uh, you know, police, anti-police uh, brutality rallies, and things like that. Also, I had a step in the Source magazine at one point, as well as uh, the Fez magazine. In 2005, I wrote the cover story to the history of a law and the five percenters. And also the cold feature story in the same issue about the Zulu nation. That's in regards to writing. Before that, I had my foot in the world, in the music world. Was doing a few things in that arena and stepped out of that and here I am today. In addition to what you had mentioned before, you've been pivotal as far as putting the spotlight on 5%ers who have returned to the essence, 5% of honor days and events that occur within the pages of the Amsterdam News. And to see that you were instrumental in the co-naming of the street and you were the one who spearheaded and had that determined idea, it seems like it's an outgrowth from what you've been doing on a smaller scale, so to speak, in the Amsterdam News. Do you see that? Yeah, it's all related. It's like, uh, I gotta thank Sister Naya Arende, the editor of the Amsterdam News, who didn't know me from a hole in the wall and opened up the door and allowed me the platform to express myself. Because if it was not for her, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing in regards to the Amsterdam News. Any articles you've seen in the Amsterdam news for the last decade and change regarding the Five Percenters, the Zulu Nation, the Black Panthers, um, you know, Charles Barron and progressive politicians, it's been because of her. She's the editor who allowed me to, to have that platform, as well as Sister Ellie, Ellie Tatum, Eleanor Tatum, who is the publisher of the Amsterdam news. But really, Naya is the one who opened up the door. And also, Mr. Herb Boyd, who's been very instrumental as well in giving me advice and telling me how to tighten up my writing skills. So some of the articles that you've written when um, Dumal returned home, you wrote an uh, article on that. Every time there's a show improved, you've been uh, documenting that. So you've been in the trenches as far as documenting the history of this nation. Yeah, we have to, because like, before I started writing in the Amsterdam News, the Amsterdam News was the only place I could find published information regarding the father and the five percenters. Uh, the God Lord Grace from Ali, he showed me how to, he showed me the science of going through the microfilms. And I started going through the microfilms and back in the equality years and pulled up mad articles on the gods. And from there, it just opened up. So when I got the platform to write in the Amsterdam News, which started in 2007 after Sean Bell got aired out, from there, I just took it and now I allowed the platform again to write about the show and prove each year, every now and then on the Father's physical day. Um, the first guard that I wrote about that went home was Wise Jamel. And Wise Jamel was very instrumental in my growth and development because I started going on the tours with him back in the born years. The annual show and prove tour, which goes around mostly central Harlem, central Mecca and it shows and proves the areas where the father and justice and some of the prominent guards and nurse really were frequented during that time period. So how did the determined idea come about that you wanted to start this initiative and get the street named after a uh, law of justice and the five percenters? How did that come about? I got inspired by a Bubadiga Sonny Carson from the heart of Medina. Back about eight years ago, I wrote an article about the streets that he co-named in the heart of Medina, which is Bed Star. And I didn't know, you know, growing up, you see streets, you see them named, like you don't think about how that happened. And I just started putting it together. But when I did an article on Sonny Carson and seeing the streets that he renamed in Bed Star, 
I got the idea. I said, yo, you know what? We can honor the father the same way. So that was about eight years ago. I didn't know how to go about doing the process, though, because it takes more. It was a lot of work to get it done, especially when you're starting from scratch and you don't know nothing. And I never dealt with politics before, so I'm coming straight out the blind and trying to feel my way around. And, you know, certain doors open up. And I just put the idea out there in some of the articles I wrote in the Amsterdam, as well as when I was writing with hiphopwire.com. And from there, it burned out, you know what I mean? But I saw, I put the ball in motion in 2017, in July. I saw elected activist Charles Barron at the African Street Festival in downtown Medina. And he told me, come to Mecca and go see Councilman Bill Perkins and he'll help you. And Bill Perkins, I spoke to some of his office staff and they told me what I had to do. I went to Community Board 10 on 125th Street filled out the paperwork, and it went from there. So Abuba Dika, Sonny Carson was inspiration. Charles Barron was a catalyst who put you on the right path. And Councilman Bill Perkins and Community Board 10 were instrumental in bringing this home and across the home plate. Yes, sir, because like I said, I was coming straight out of nowhere. I ain't know what to do. I ain't know about, you know, what paperwork to fill out or nothing. I went to Community Board 10, they gave me the application. I filled out the application, I did the knowledge, you know, I had to put together a dossier, which I had to submit to them, and I compiled a 40-page dossier, which included newspaper articles from the equality years, it included um, a magazine and newspaper articles since then about the history of the 5% because my job going to the presentation was that I had to convince these people why a law and justice deserve a street sign. You know, and actually before I even go into that, I gotta thank, I didn't do this by myself. It was, even though it was my determined idea and I spearheaded it, I was, at all the meetings, there was six meetings all together. And at all of the meetings, I had major support from the guards. It was Umala from Mecca, who was actually one of the guards that was there in equality years and knew a law and justice. The guards say cool from Mecca who um, he came through, he got a lot of signatures doing the show and proof at the petitions. The God trust a law from, he's the firstborn from now justice. He came through to all the meetings and provided support and recorded, uh, video recorded the meetings. Um, Brother Reggie from the Sons of Africa, who's from Pilon, that's my big brother, Reggie. I invited Reggie because he was instrumental in getting the signs approved for Dr. Ben and the Lombe Brad. And not just that, but me and Brother Reggie go back a couple of decades and that's that's my big brother. So I invited him. He came through. Um also I invited Dr. Leonard Jeffries, who was one of my scholars, one of my teachers. The warrior scholar. One of the African warrior scholars, without a doubt. And he came through and he spoke up at the first presentation. I reached out to Councilman, check that to Assemblyman, uh, Mr. Keith Wright. His father was Judge Bruce Wright, who I was told back in Equality and Guard years was given some of the proper sentences who was getting incarcerated a fair shake, and he earned the name Cutting Loose Bruce. So I reached out to Mr. Keith Wright. I said, look, this is what I'm doing. Can you provide a support letter? He told me, not only am I going to give you a support letter, I'm going to be there at that meeting, at the initial meeting. And like I said, I'm not really that knowledgeable on politics. I know his name, but I didn't know at what extent, what weight he held. And when I spoke to people, they said, yo, the key right there, that's not gonna get denied. That's gonna get approved. And he got up and spoke. He said when he was 12 or 13 years old, he was out here in the streets of Mecca when King got assassinated. And he said, while well, every city in, in America went up in flames, New York, primarily Harlem, did not. And it was because of the five percentage. He got up and said that at that initial meeting. And so that helped get it approved. Um, also, Self Glorious. When I first got the determined idea about eight years ago, Self Glorious printed up the very first petitions. He's from Mecca as well. And then the guard unique who does the computer, he runs the computer room at the law school. He um, scanned the first post that was put out back in October of last year, which was very instrumental in having a mass amount of guards and nurses, over 100 guards and nurses showed up at the community board meeting on the guard day of November. And that was a very, very big meeting. So I, I gotta give praise to 
uh, the guard Unique, who runs the computer room. Unique also, when I wrote the Feds article in 2005, Unique is the one who scanned the reflections from me because I wasn't really knowledgeable on computers and stuff like that back then. So he helped do that as well. So I gotta give respect to the guard Unique. And there's also, that's just at the meetings. Uh, along the way, there are a few other people who added on to the cipher as well. Um, I said it was Sekou, Trust, Umala, um, Brother Reggie, Though that was the main core. Also, Black Sea from the heart of Medina, he came through. He provided major support. Dr. Falou, she came through and provided a support letter, and she gave, she didn't speak up, but she, her presence was there. She was also instrumental in getting Dr. Ben and Lombie Bravsons approved as well. Um, Brother Tyrone Ball, who's the head of the Tennis Association at St. Nicholas Houses, he came through and approved it. Initially, it was going to be Niles Wisdom Guard Street. And that got denied because of his name after Lloyd Dickens and his daughter. She's the assembly an assembly person in Harlem, and she denied it. She would not approve it. So we had to move it to Niles Wisdom Equality Street, which is not where the Niles and Wisdom of the Fathers at. So why was it initially 127 from the Knowledge Wisdom God Street? Why did you want? What was the historical relevance for having it there initially? Well, from what Firstborn Prince had explained was that. In October of Equality Culture, that's when the father announced that we would now be known as the Father Simmons. Uh, right around the corner where he got shot at a, few, a couple months afterwards, right, which is right on the corner. Also, three of the firstborns are from Niles Wisdom Guard Street. Um, also, St. Nicholas Houses have been very prominent amongst the guards from the inception of Equality Years. And there's also more visibility there because of the projects and also because Harry Tubman is there, which was another major inspiration. I want the youth when they go to school, they look up and they be like, damn, my school is on the street named after law and justice. Why is that and who are they? So that was the intent. It didn't happen, so we moved it one block down. Not really a big thing. Still moving on. I know that as far as St. Nicholas's projects are concerned, a few years ago I met a brother who is instrumental, or well, that you were instrumentally involved with, Kasim. I, I met him in St. Nicholas Projects. Yeah. Kasim is Black Messiah's older physical. Kasim explained that the father taught his whole family, right? And also, not that he taught his old earth, but he was really tight with their old earth as well. And she used to prepare food for the gods back in the quality years. Kasim came through to the big meeting in November. And he also came through to a, a couple meetings after that as well. There were other meetings and he definitely supported us. When I first brought the idea to him, because he's the closest thing we could get to Black Messiah, who was the first of the first non-born. And he approved it. He said it was a great idea. He supported it. He signed the petition. He also built other guards and nurses and asked them to sign the petition as well. For those who are not familiar with who Kasim is, uh, there are a lot of pictures circulating of, of him at the unveiling ceremony holding one of the street signs. He's the, the god who has the street sign in the, in, the, in, the, in the chair, and a lot of people have been taking pictures and circulating pictures of his sign from the unveiling ceremony. Right, right. I don't know. Um, with the signs, when it, once it got approved, we had about a few extra signs designated to certain people. Kasim is one of them because again, the historical significance. His physical, his younger physical, Black Messiah, was the first of the first nine born. Throughout the years, I've met many gods and many people who've been taught by Black Messiah or somebody who Black Messiah taught. So he was very instrumental in that. And that's why I brought Kasim through. And like I said, the history of Kasim holds itself. Well, you mentioned a lot of father and the historical significance of 127th Street. Some have said that a lot of father didn't want to be body worshipped. And how, what, did you have any or hear any such arguments when you were moving forward with this initiative to get the street name that this might be glorifying the father and the father didn't want that? How, how, how did you address that particular challenge? Yeah, I've been told by a few guards primarily the guards that the father didn't want to be body worshipped or idolized while he was here and certainly not after he went home because he was warning them that he wasn't going to be here in the physical for too long. 
So he kept telling everybody, if you want to see me, continue teaching and come together. And my thing was that for the most part, it was like 98, 99% of the nation supported this. And if anything else, you're always going to have haters. So there was a few people that was like, nah, the father didn't want this, the father didn't want that. And when I built with Big Brother, Lord Graceful, he said that the only reason they saying that because they didn't think of the idea. Because had they thought of the idea, they wouldn't be saying that. And I agree with him when he said that. You know, my thing is that the sign, it's just a street sign. There's another thing I was saying too, like I said it on Saturday. It's just a street sign. Street signs go up and now why every week without much fanfare because people's not paying attention to them. Even though many times there are significant people, they're important people, but if you're not there in that area, you're not gonna know about it. And this, it's just a street sign. It's just like, I'm not asking for a national holiday on the father. I'm not saying like, you know, do this or do that. It's a, it's a street sign to heighten awareness of who he is because who he, him and justice were or are. Now, all of us are gonna be in the essence in a few decades, whether you like it or not, no matter what your way of life is, no matter what your culture is, no matter what your religion is, no matter whether, whatever. Hmm. All of us gonna be in the essence in a few decades. We're going to be remembered by what we do today and the seeds we plant now. So the sign, that's all that is. It's just a symbol. It's the meant to heighten awareness. So people walk by, they look up, and they be like, all right, boom, these people must have been somebody because they did something here. I, want, I mainly wanted to inspire the youth. That's my main intent for putting that up. It's not worshiping anybody. It's not, you know what I mean? Like I said, it's awareness. People walk by, they see the names, do the knowledge. Pass it on. Well, you said it's just a street sign, but every great journey starts with one small step. So, even though it might seem like a drop in the bucket, if you put a few drops over a period of time, you have a full bucket, and water can cut through mountains after a period of time. I thought that the significance, well, why did you choose that particular day to understand in cipher of March? Well, it is that on the, on the application they asked, they suggested to pick a specific date relevant to the people being honored. And the father's physical day is in February, and it was too cold to do it then. The father went home in June, and I didn't want to wait that long because, you know, in the last few years, a lot of prominent guards, a few prominent guards have been going home. So my thing was that, let me just rock this now. And the date that I selected was to understand it at a cipher day of March. Because from what I've been told, the father was released from Madawan after being incarcerated for two years on the Wisdom Power Day of March and Equality God. So I said, this year the Wisdom Power Day fell on a Monday. And I didn't want to do it on a Monday. And the people up at uh, Mr. Perkins office, Councilman Perkins office, they suggested that we do it on a Saturday, which makes more sense because more people are off work and off school. So I didn't want to do the Saturday before because the following Sunday is just another day. So I said, let's just wait a few more days and then the following day will be the Parliament, which is also Earth Appreciation Day. I knew a lot of people was going to come in from out of town, so I anticipated that they would go to both. They would go to the unveiling Saturday and also attend the Parliament the next day. So that's how that day was selected. Well, you know how we break it down and draw it up. I saw it as something that can be looked forward to moving into the future as we have traditions that are started we have honor days that are started and just the fact that it understanding the cipher to me on that particular day is us recognizing the best part of the cipher and i think that moving forward it could have that type of meaning do you um anticipate that moving forward that that day will have a greater significance now that it has that particular event happening on it uh, that happened on it the unveiling that understanding cipher might have a new meaning for us uh, mess up to individuals themselves you know everybody draw things up according to their level of understanding i can't say how the next person is going to see it you know i know what it means to me and like i said i just mean it for to inspire the youth and you know pass it on it's like we have a few significant dates in our in our calendar every year, right? And if people want to add it on, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, it's not that far away from when the anniversary when the father got released. You know, this is a Wisdom Power Day. It's just another day in the Nazi. People want to do like speaking engagements or tours or whatever. 
that you know whatever could spark conversation, whatever could spark interest, whatever could have people interested in learning more about law and justice, then you know I'm with it. And let's push it forward. Well, speaking of which, you actually have one of the signs, don't you? Yes, sir. Uh, like I said, when when uh, once it got approved, right, and we selected the date, the sign had to be constructed a certain way. Uh, when I first pushed the campaign, in, not to pull it out, when I first pushed the campaign in the first presentation I made in June of last year, it was going to be a law of the father's way because I didn't know you could put two people's names on a street sign. Also, they, I was told in the political arena that you can't name the group, the name the sign after a group or organization because if the name changes, the sign will still be the same. And then, so when I made, when I filled out the application, I put a law of the 5%ers way, yet the presentation was for a law of the father. And I did that on purpose because I wanted to draw people's mind to see what they were gonna say at the community board. So during the, pre after, at the conclusion of the first presentation, the chairperson, Ms. Uh, Raquel Vasquez, who I wanna give enough thanks to as well, she suggested, why don't you name it a law in the 5%ers? And I explained to her what I just said. And she said, that's not true. She named some street somewhere that's named after organizations. So she said, come back in June with an amended application. That was in June of last year. Community Board 10 is on hiatus um, over the summertime. So when we came back in, in September, I, I, matter of fact, over the summertime, I learned that you can add two people's name to it. There's a brother named Brother Julius Tajadine who was very, very helpful. He gave me a lot of information and a lot of advice in regards to the, the sign designation of it going from a way to being a square, as far as being able to put two people's names on it, as far as, it was a whole lot of things. I can't even go into all that because I'll be here all day. But I want to say thank you to Brother Julius Tajadine. And he also came to several of the meetings. And he informed me that we could name, you could put two names on the same street sign. So when I came, we came back in September, the same squad that I mentioned earlier, we named it a law, justice, and the five percent of square. And we changed it from a way to a square because Niles was an equality street, is already named after James Brown. God Avenue is already named after Adam Clayton Powell Jr. So you can't put two names, two co-names on the same block. That's what I learned. Yet Brother Julius explained that if we do it as a square, it won't infringe on either code names that are there already. So that's what we did. We changed it from, a, from being a law of justice in the five percenters way to being a law of justice in the five percenters square. Yeah, but that seems like it's mathematics anyway. You know, we on the square. Exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. You know what I mean? So that history was written in advance. Mm -hmm. well, so we rocked that. Also, I want to say thank you to Mr. Mays, who's the chief of staff up at Honest Dickens' office. He also provided a great deal of advice and information, very similar to what Brother Julius shared. And also my cousin Lily, who has a foot in that arena, and she also uh, explained the same thing that Brother Julius did. Well, you, mentioned, you mentioned a lot of politicians and elected officials. Some people, I think, have a, a stigma or a, uh, an aversion to putting a, and getting themselves involved with politicians, even though a lot of father himself was a person who utilized politicians to the benefit of the community, the benefit of the youth, and the benefit of the five percenters in the, the nation of gods and earths. So, what do you, how, what have you learned as far as the power of utilizing community boards and having relationships with your elected officials for getting things done? Is there something that you would recommend or you would uh, advocate moving forward for our nation to get involved with? It's like anything else. You gotta just, whenever you go in that cycle, you just gotta be you. You know what I mean? Whenever you go and whether you go to work, a nine to five, whether you dealing with politics, whether you in school, you gotta go in there and take the best part. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I did. Well, that's what we did, rather. You know, we went in there and we had to determine our idea. In the very beginning, a few people were saying, a law is not, a law, that name is not gonna be up on the public street sign. That's not gonna happen. Yet in my mind, I kept saying, T big, the black man is God, it's gonna happen. And regardless of the adversity, in my mind, I said, it's still gonna happen. One of the very first, matter of fact, at the very first presentation, one of the community board members, or count, check that, one of the committee members, it was a transportation, historical preservation, and landmarks committee. And one of the members, she said, why don't you name it Clarence 13X? Because that was the name written in the dossier when he was in the mosque. 
And I explained to her that was his level of understanding when he was in the Mars. As he continued studying and growing, he took on the name of law to reflect the understanding that he had at that time. And Clarence 13X was who he, he was known as in the Mars. But what we honor is where he found it, which is the five percenters, and we know him as a law. So then once I, once I explained that to her, she was alright with it. She understood that. A lot of people come into knowledge itself nowadays in this age of information through uh, when they find out about the five percenters through doing Google searches and going to Wikipedia pages. And it seems that the name Clarence 13X is what is perpetuated ad infinitum through the internet cipher. So it's important that things like this happen, that his identity and ascension is the law of the Father and his evolution to that particular level of understanding is understood so he's not stigmatized and encapsulated within his Clarence 13X um, particular status. Uh, do you um, see this sign co-naming as being something that's progressively going to make that happen and people understand that he evolved beyond Clarence 13X? You know, that's uh, now in the internet age because the people running those websites for the most part are not conscious people. The five percenters have always been in the streets. We never had an issue with what his name was. You know what I'm saying? Like for as long as I've known, like as the gods and even even the, the other conscious people, or we everybody always knew him as a law. Like when I been with Dr. Ben years ago, African scholar warrior Dr. Joseph Ben um, Yokanan, also known as Dr. Ben, the uh, Egyptologist or Kometa physician. He, when I first told him I was a father son, he said, I knew our law. I knew our law. I worked with him. Um, Professor James Small, he knew the father. He referred to him as a law. Abby Doom from The Last Poets, he referred to him as a law. So, and the five percenters, when they were younger, they, they referred to him as a father. So it was never an issue with us. It's just now during the information age, because like I said, people run the websites and stuff, and not people in the streets. So that's where that mix up is at. But to us, we always knew him as a law. The thing about it is that we, as a nation, have our roots in the street and a lot of our teachings still stay within that particular element and within that paradigm but we have to understand that time moves on as i didn't come up in the era when they were teaching in the streets like that i didn't learn in the streets like that when they were teaching that way i was younger and i would hear it but it wasn't until i heard it through hip-hop music that i that i was drawn up and just like i got it through a different way moving forward these kids are on tablets, these kids are on um, websites, these kids are Googling stuff and Wikipedia and stuff. So although that might have been our element, we have to look forward and project ourselves into the future. I remember we were discussing one of your projects and you told me that one of our Malcolm X's lieutenants told you that they didn't realize they were making history. And that's what we have to realize that we are making history and write that history in advance and we can't, you know, uh, limit ourselves or try to adjust our teachings based on how it was in the 60s, 70s, or 80s. We have to be forward thinking into the 2000s, the 3000s, 4000s, or 5000s. And that means taking advantage of the media that's here. How do you see that? Yeah, it's right and exact. Life is about making progress, man. You can't stay stuck back in, you know, a few decades ago. That's just a mistake that happens here where we at now in the law school. There's some dudes here still holding on to five decades ago and that's all they talk about. And it's like, life is about making progress, man. We gotta move forward. You know, it's like, it only makes sense. If you don't make, if you don't make progress, you don't move forward, you're gonna get left behind. And now that everything's on the internet and everything is with the information age, people can pick up a phone and get the information that we used to have to go through libraries and dig up through index cards to find and stuff. And they can find it now and, and literally in seconds. You know what I'm saying? So we have to adjust with the times. If not, we're gonna left behind. We're gonna get left behind. How do you see us keeping up the momentum that this big high visibility event has brought us? And what you what are you specifically doing to move this momentum forward? I mentioned that on Saturday that we should take this momentum because one of the things that cannot be lost about last Saturday is that the unity that we had, right? I haven't seen unity like that amongst us in, in a long, long time. I say a couple of decades because it's like, you had guards and nurses that came over from the West Coast, down South, all boroughs that hadn't been to parliaments in, in decades, you know what I mean? You had like, you had people coming in from all up and down the East Coast, and it was all love and harmony and unity, you know, and it was here for one common cause, 
to see the sign go up honoring the law and justice. So we had to continue that momentum that we picked up then, and you know, we'll keep moving forward with it. That's what I was saying before. It's like, it's rare for us to, to come together for a common cause, at least in recently, because you know, everybody's sitting home on their computers and stuff. So for all of us to come together in person like that, we shut down the block. We shut down Guard Avenue. I projected that. Last year when the campaigns like was getting making progress and it was gaining momentum, I said we're gonna shut that avenue down. That's what I, that was my determined idea. I'm gonna shut Guard Avenue down on both sides so we could see people could see the force that we have, the unity that we have. And that's exactly what happened. From Nas was in Powell Street, to Nas was in Guard Street, on both sides of Guard Avenue, it was shut down for a moment while the ceremony was happening. You know what I mean? We need to grab that momentum and keep moving forward with it, man, because who knows when the next time is going to be. You know what I'm saying? We have to keep that momentum and move it on, man. I'm telling you, God's been calling me from across the country asking for interviews or asking for information for articles they write in or just for information, period, to share in their hood. And that's where we're supposed to be, man. We got to spread this out, man. We got to understand the law, whether people agree with him or not, he put his life on the line on the strength of what he stood for. So anybody, you gotta respect that, you know what I'm saying? And he did it. And look what he built. We here five decades and change later, still making noise, still making progress, still building, still educating the youth. What more need to be said than that? From the beginning, I've heard you emphasize it on several occasions that it's not been about you and the individuals who, who assisted you in making this happen, even though you had a determined idea. You've emphasized that this has been about honoring the law and justice. How important is that to you to make sure that that message is reverberated throughout history? I mean, that's the reality of things because, you know, I still, I'm still on the physical plane here. You know, like I still got work to do that, you know, if I want, you know, to bring fame to my name, I can still do it. You know what I'm saying? I still got time for that. My thing is, again, I want to thank the law and justice what they gave us because when I was in the dead world, applying the knowledge of myself was a life preserver. You know what I mean? I know what it did for me, and I saw what it did for others, and I see what it done throughout the years when I pass on knowledge to somebody, and I see how they pick it up, and they get the self-esteem, they get the spine in their back. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a good feeling for me when, you know, that you can help somebody else out there seeking direction, because I know just because I got my foot out the mud doesn't mean everybody else did. There's still people who got the same mindset I had at that period of time when I was in that stage of my life. So. Like I said, my thing is, it's about a lot of justice. A lot of, you know, there was glory seekers there on Saturday as well. Like some people got up and tried to, you know, get the shine for them. And I explained days leading up and that same day, I said, this is not a parliament. You can't come up here and grab the mic. This is, we honor the law and justice and the great gods and earth who laid down the foundation to our great and mighty nation. That was the whole purpose for this. You know what I'm saying? Because if they wouldn't have done what they did yesterday, we wouldn't have the little bit we got today. Now, what we do today determines on how great tomorrow will be for the future generations. And that's always been my focus, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, the history of the law and justice has primarily been in the streets. It hasn't probably been documented. Even now, there's a few books out on the history of the five percenters from the 60s. And some of the books have good information in it, yet there's no one book and there probably, probably never be no one book, but there's like they're not they're missing the the theology, the 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 messages, the there's a lot of the ideology of the five percenters. So you know what I mean? There's just a lot of stuff that's missing in that regard. But again, it's like we we're still here on the physical plane. We have to pay homage to those who came before us, and that's what the purpose for the street sign is to me. And some glory seekers been going up because they ain't been doing that their whole life. So they see a time where they could be in front of the cameras or they got people talking about them now. So they want to be up like, oh, boom. They want to be part of it or whatever. But that's not what it's about, man. We have to be humble and, you know, like I said, give all praise and respect to law and justice. They put their life on the line. Not just them, the firstborns, the first fruit. There are some who don't even have titles yet contributed to building this nation. You know what I mean? So we have to give respect to them because having knowledge at any period in time and saying the black man is God, that's some real difficult stuff to do. Especially in equality years though, during that time, even before that, with no Drew Ali and all them. But I'm talking about specifically about the law now, to say that you was God, to say the black man is God in equality years, 
that wasn't that easy. So we have to give respect to that, man. Like, that it was a real difficult time from what I've been told. And a lot of people was gunning for the father. A lot of people was going, trying to take him off the planet from what I've been told. You know what I mean? So that's what it is to me. The street sign is a heightened awareness. So people can see, the people who've never heard of him, they'll find out or they'll be inspired to learn more about him and move on from there. And there's one truth that is known through our political circus that all politics is local. So people say, well, it doesn't matter if I vote or everything. Well, to a certain extent, it, you might be right, but you have to realize that power comes through two things, through organized money or organized people. But with organized people, you can get the attention of organized money. So one vote might not count, but an organized vote, a block of votes, whether it be 100 or 100,000, that catches the attention. Their strength in numbers is more than just hyperbole or, a, uh, you know, some cliche. It's actual fact. Right, exactly. And what lessons have you learned navigating this process of successfully getting this street named as far as um, navigating the political process? And how would you or would you advocate the utility of this process for the nation of gods and earth moving forward to achieve our objectives as the father did in... <laughs> achieving such objectives is getting the school that we're in right now. Yeah, right, exactly. You know, uh, in the streets, we understand that you keep your friends close, your enemies closer. When you deal with politicians, not all of them are your enemies, but you have some progressive ones. You know what I mean? Like Charles Barron, uh, Bill Perkins, uh, Keith Wright, and several others. You know, it's like, you got to play the game to win the game. You can't sit back crying and complaining. You want to change something, get up and be that change. You know, you gotta get up and make that move. I have no confidence in politics at all. Yet, I had to step in this arena in order to make this vision come to fruition. Because if not, it would just be a thought in my head and, and I'd be old and grumpy complaining like, oh, I should've did this, I should've did that. So I went in, at the same time though, I didn't compromise my principles. I stayed being me. I went in, the first presentation, hair corn roll, my gold fronts, came in there and built, I just made sure to do it respectfully and I didn't want to intimidate nobody that was there because those are like really working nine to five people and things like that, but they're community people. So I'm sure they see people like me every day. So the thing is that I learned the process and the guard Umala showed me a lot because he's been in the community board for a couple decades and he showed me a lot. And like I said, if you want things done, you have to get up and make it happen, man, because it's not going to happen on its own. Like anything else, it got a positive and a negative. When you go in there, you gotta take the best part. I went in there, me and my comrades went in there and we had the determined idea that we was gonna get this accomplished. And the only way it happened was by making, taking the, uh, the information and do, putting the footwork in. We got over 2,000 signatures for the petition, yet according to the application, the criteria is that 60% of the businesses and residents on the street have to sign the petition. So even though we had 2,000, most of them were from throughout the five boroughs, some was even out of state. Those didn't count, yet they did not hurt because when I presented the signatures to the community board, they was like, wow, we never seen nobody bring as many signatures for a street code naming. So they didn't even go through them to see which ones was on the block or which ones out of the state or whatever. They went for all of them. And like I said, you just gotta learn it. Go in there and don't compromise yourself. When you go into any arena, you know, especially like politics, you gotta go in there and be yourself. And we made this happen. Like I said, it wasn't just me. We gathered, we gathered over 2,000 signatures, primarily here in Central Mecca, in Central Harlem. And it wasn't gonna happen if we didn't make that move. You know what I mean? We, if we didn't, if the community did not support it, then Perkins wouldn't be able to do what he had to do. You know what I'm saying? We was able to convince the community board by showing that the community supported it. We had signatures, like I said, over 2,000 from right here on, initially it was gonna be 127th Street, but they approved it for 126th Street, it's only one block away, you know what I mean? And once Perkins' office saw that the, right, the, the local area supported it, they ran with it, you know what I'm saying? So you have to get involved with politics. I've been building with the guard, Rasheen, out in the heart of Medina, who was affiliated with Abu Badika Sunday Carson. 
at one point, I mean, while Sonny was still here in the physical, and he was saying that one of the plans for the nation is to construct a political movement, a political, I don't want to say organization, but a political movement from within the five percenters. And I think that's a great idea because again, politics, we have, see, we have the, a lot of people look at like, like politics is outside. We are the politics. We are the ones who determine what goes on. And they proved that by the street sign going up. In the very beginning, a lot of people were saying the name of law is not going to be on the public street sign. And I said, yes, it will. And then we made it happen because we had enough people approve it, agree with it, that we convinced the people at the community board. Once they approved it, the people of the city council approved it. And from there, the blogs were signed off on it, and here we are. We have to understand that the science of everything in, in, in life, love, peace, and happiness was started by the original man. However, a lot of us have lost the knowledge of self, and the colored man has taken that and has mastered it, and, and, and has utilized it and made all kind of commodifications of it and modifications of it. And in order for us to play this game, we have to reclaim what they have made lame. Um, politics, just like money, is a tool. It's an end to a means. People sometimes look at uh, uh, politics as if it's a religion. We should look at politics, those political parties, and this is something you mentioned the source earlier. This is something that I had written in, um, they had a, um, a, a section within the source magazine where I wrote a, an editorial, so to speak, or think piece as they call them. I think it was called Politrix was the section. And I called it political game banging when I talked about how Republicans were red and um, the Democrats were blue and I had likened them to Bloods and Crips. But the reason I had brought that point was saying that we shouldn't have loyalty to either Republicans or Democrats. The loyalty should be to our own interest. Mm -hmm. And anybody who, another maxim, like I mentioned, all politics is local. Another one is there are no such thing as permanent friends or permanent enemies, only permanent interests. And we have to look at politics as that. It's just a game, it's just a tool, and we use it to our benefit. If the Republicans are gonna support us in what we do, then go with the Republicans. If the Democrats are gonna support us in what we do, then we go with the Democrats. If the independents or whoever else supports us in what we're gonna do, then we go with who supports us in what we do. Ultimately, it's about what we wanna do, not what the political agendas are. We have to utilize those particular priorities for our own benefits. And I understand that there are a lot of initiatives moving forward. You had mentioned what Rasheen um, from from the head of Medina, from Harder Medina is talking about, and I think that's what they call a political action committee, which is something that you use to in exert influence in the political arena. And I think that that's a wonderful idea. As I mentioned before, there's two elements that actually have leverage in society: it's organized money and organized people. I am a member of a particular organization called NACA, which basically has registered voters and they use those membership as being registered voters to pressure the banks into giving them low cost loans for communities that traditionally have um, been subject to predatory loaning. But they were able to get all of these big banks to up billions of dollars because they had the strength of organized people. And that made the organized money yield. And we could take pages from that and learn. And I understand that you have certain initiatives moving forward that you would like to see. That the street sign naming might have been just a street sign naming to you, but it was a major milestone to us as five percenters, as the nation of God's nerves. And I understand that you have other initiatives for the nation that you want to move forward on. Would you care to share or speak on what the next steps are as far as solidifying and cementing the legacy of the nation of God's nerves for all of posterity. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Before that, though, I want to say that um, in, res in regards to politics, it's gonna rewind a little bit. In regards to politics, everything you do is affected by politics, whether you like it or not, right? The fair on on public transportation, um, the light, how often the, the street lights turn red or green, right? Um, the curriculum in the schools, right? Um, when your garbage gets picked up, right? Um, you know, like whether you're getting hot or cold water, everything you do is affected by politics. So whether you get involved with it or not, politics will affect you. You have to understand that the politics is not outside. You are the politics. We are the politics. People are talking about 
Oh, the city gave us a sign. The city didn't give us nothing. We made that happen. We had to determine our business. <laughs> the football you, game. you know what I'm saying? We made it happen. You know what I mean? And, you know, that's in, in that regard. I just want to add that on. Now, um, can you rephrase the question? What's next? Oh. What are the next initiatives? Building on the momentum of the street sign. You had, I think you had projected, you had, you had spoken on it previously about what the next um, big ticket item, so to speak, is on your agenda. Uh, right now, we're in the process of getting the building landmarks. Also, we bring more attention to people who come to Harlem to do tours or they want to learn about, you know, like certain, certain parts of Harlem that's very important, like the Schaumburg Center. That's got a historical landmark uh, designation, right? Um, the former Audubon Ballroom, which is now the Malcolm X and Dr. Betty Shabazz Cultural and Education Center, right? There are a few places in Harlem that have landmark designation, and that also will hopefully preserve it for many future generations, as well as the invaders of the community. Yeah. The attention of the world was on us on March 30th. And so now, I'm sure that that's going to lead to people um, looking to see what we're going to be doing with this particular, with the land that we have here on 126th Street and 7th Avenue now that we have the designation of the street sign. What do you see happening here and what do you think must be done? You mentioned landmarking. How, how do you see that coming on and what's the next step after we landmark? Uh, I mean, to tell you the truth, I don't really deal with the everyday goings on at the school. So I, I can't speak about what they're projecting as far as like the day-to-day -day activities. My, my vision, again, is to preserve the property for future generations because I reap the benefits of this school throughout the decades as well as my seeds, you know? And I'm just looking forward to the next generation. So as far as day-to-day -day activities, I'm not sure. Um, the landmarking is going to be the same team working. Um, say Cool, Trust, Brother Reggie, you know, and a handful of others, you know what I'm saying? So you mentioned the landmark, and where, where, where's that process at now? Um, I filled out the paperwork at Community Board 10. We have meetings coming up. There was a, a lady that I met there a couple months ago. She came by and assessed the school as far as the history of it. And, you know, we're doing the paperwork, and I'm sure that we're doing presentations real soon on that as well. Uh, you know, again, it's very important. Like, we got to understand, we're not going to be here in the physical you know, for a whole lot of time. We here, even if we live to be 100 years old, that's nothing in the whole annals of time, you know what I mean? So we have to project and live and, and prepare for future generations. That's one of the things that I learned from studying the father's history, that he was not really as concerned with his physical being more so as he was, you know, the youth and how they would continue uh, prospering in the future. And so, you know, that's what I'm saying with me too, like, I want to add on and say thank you to a law and justice and also, you know, help future generations, man, because each generation is going to have their segment that's dissatisfied, that's messed up, that needs help, that needs direction. Right now, the crack babies are coming of age. You know, a lot of the children are being raised by their parents, by their grandparents, their aunts, their uncles, their neighbors, their cousins, some or whatever, because their parents were strung out on drugs or incarcerated because of drugs or, or, or returned to the essence because of drugs, you know what I mean? So those children are, be, are coming of age with a lot of anger, a lot of misdirection, uh, you know, and they, they, they're looking for a way and we have to reach them. And again, they're into social media, they're into they, iPhones, they're into, you know, today's technology. So we have to find a way to bring them into this information. Nobody even go to regular events no more like how they used to. People don't even go to movies how they used to because now people pick up their phone or their they laptop or whatever and they on it. You know what I'm saying? So how are we going to reach the youth of this generation? That's what we got to really think about. That's what we got to work towards. There is a lot on the agenda for the 5%ers here. The 5% agenda has pointed out that we need to organize a political action uh, committee, uh, a voting block. We need to put on our agenda, or we are putting on our agenda, landmarking the school. We uh, have on our agenda building something and preserving the property for future generations. We have an agenda that I think that we should think about the next 6,000 years, literally, <laughs> because 
think about it. There was a, a, a man who, who, who renounced his kingdom in India and searched the world to find out about, you know, uh, the, the high truths and then you project once he found out a lot about himself and started teaching people you project that a couple of thousand years you have Buddhism <laughs> you have a story that people have told in their children about a, 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 a mystic who, who um, stood up against the, the, the forces of the Roman Empire and spoke for the poor and for the children and the needy and, all, and the shelterless and you project that for 2,000 years and you have Christianity it starts with one person in a small circle of, 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 of people who believe in that particular pe person. And then you project that by a couple of thousand years, you have a phenomenon that encompasses millions and billions of people. And we have to see that that's what's happening with us right now. We can't see it for what it is right now. We have to see what this will be two, three thousand years from now and prepare for that. After all, we're supposed to write our history 25,000 years in advance. How do you see that as far as being the 5% of the agenda? I mean, that's part of what the street sign is. Like I said, it's like, you know, children are going to look up and all of us going to be in the essence in a few decades from now, you know, and the children will look up and hopefully it'll inspire them. You know, like the real history of the law and justice and the gods has not been properly documented. The best place you can find it, it hasn't been documented in the book, let me say that. The best place you can find it is the Son of Man newspaper coming out of Medina because you have some of the guards who's actually taught by the Father and was there and prominent in doing equality years that could tell about that history. But overall, there's no one book that really contains the whole idea of what the five percent is all about. I would also like to add on the food for thought, which although it reprints a lot of things from the Son of Man, yeah. it is also a, a oh, good of source of information. And the five percent of newspaper, the, the person uh, that also has a thing that also republishes a lot of historical event. And it was a person who was taught by the Father who also puts out that particular thing. So I would say those that trinity of the five percent of uh, the Son of Man. Food for Thought are definitely resources yeah. for people seeking to gain information about the nation of gods and herbs. Yeah, definitely. You know, like anything else, do your research, cross-reference, take the best part for yourself. And I also like to applaud the fact that they brought the Son of Man back. So you can catch new issues and reissues of the Son of Man at the parliaments moving forward. In addition to your complimentary copies of Food for Thought, Lord Graceful has never charged for Food for Thought, and even getting your copies of the 5% of newspaper, which I've recently opened up an Instagram account for. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to move us progressively in to the new media. People look at us like we dinosaurs. Like people be like, the five percenters, y'all still around? Mm, I've like, heard that. Like, like my son's physical degree and stuff like that. They're looking at us like, yo, like what y'all doing? Like what's going on? You know, like like years ago, somebody asked me, y'all still got that clubhouse over there on the corner? You know what I'm saying? And it's because you see multi-million dollar buildings going up around us and people over here fighting over trinkets. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, we gotta move with the times because if not, we get left behind. That's what, really what's been happening for a couple of decades now. Speaking of social media, you mentioned that Unique had made one of the initial um, flyers to help get people galvanized for the community board meeting. But leading up to the code naming, um, there was also a social media campaign. I know there were individuals who contributed to to that. Uh, would you like to speak upon those individuals? Yeah, definitely. It was um, Queen Our Wisdom Earth from Savior's Island. She designed the the, the most recent flyer leading up to the actual unveiling ceremony. Which became a cake. <laughs> yeah, it became, actually became a cake. And it was, it was all over social media, it was everywhere. You know, and it, it contained the, the, the precise information as far as the date, the address. You know, it had actual reflections of the law and justice on it. You know, that was um, enough respect to that earth because that was, that was great. And it was actually better than the one that we had originally designed or that we were designing at the time. So she knocked that out of the box. So peace to the earth. Thank you very much for that. Also, there's um, Lord... Uh, Lord Omni. Lord Omni, excuse me. Lord Omni, the God, you know, he came through as well. And we, uh, we photoshopped a sign 
a, a version of the sign before the actual sign was manufactured. And we was meaning to promote that way in advance before that sign became available. The tangible metal sign became available. So enough respect to that God as well. Um, Showing our uh, international reach. Yeah. Lord Omni is from the British Virgin Islands by way of Texas and Pelon, but primarily based in the British Virgin Islands. Man, that's what's up, you know what I mean? We've all seen and heard everywhere, you know? True indeed. So, uh, well, speaking about the sign before you made it, you've been keeping us in suspense. Let's see the sign. This was um, the actual sign which was manufactured, and this is not the version that went up. This was a replica of it. The one that went up is double-sided. This right here. But this comes from the same shop and studio that made the one that's on the street. Right, exact. Right, and exact. You know, and this was um, on the understanding at a cipher day. You know, we handed this around. We didn't hand it out. We just handed it around so people could see it and see what it is. This is the progress that we made. This is the hard work that we put in. It started in May of last year as far as the paperwork is concerned. The idea was before that. The petition started before that. Yet, you know, we put the ball in motion, like actually making it happen. And this is the result of that. And, you know, we're moving on. We're gonna spread the word. I've been getting calls from people across the country. Yeah, can I get one or how do I get one? <laughs> we know, we're actually doing a fundraiser. If people would like to purchase signs, right? and we'll make these signs available to the general public. Um, for that, you can reach me at 929-777. You can spell out no on your keypad, K-N-O-W on your keypad, which is actually 5669. Power, equality, quality born. Once again, the math is 929-777. Spell out the word no and we'll make these available. I also would like to thank Queen Cypher, the God Latik, um, there's a handful of others, but cool. those are the primary ones that, you know, once we started getting the ball in motion and we were getting closer to the ceremony, they all stepped up and added on to the Cypher as well. Platform. Right, so, oh, and also the God Divine, the architect from Pilon, who who manufactured this platform that we stood on that Saturday so the crowd could see us because we needed to be, you know, a little ahead of everybody else. So we're going to be on the ground level because if not, then me being as short as I am, everybody would have seen me. So thank you to the God Divine the Architect from Pilon for manufacturing the platform. And he did that spur of the moment yeah. <laughs> out, of, out, out of love, no, no compensation for labor. Right. So love and respect to that guard and everybody who signed the petition because, like I said, it was over 2,000 people who signed petitions. And, you know, like some of the petitions didn't have signatures or didn't have contact info on it. Regardless of whatever, your heart was there, your intent was there to make this happen. We thank all of y'all. Uh, also, people who provided support letters. Senator, New York Senator Brian Benjamin provided a support letter. Um, Brother Shep and the Black Panthers provided a support letter. Dr. Georgina Falou and the Falou Foundation provided a support letter. Um, Assemblywoman Inez Dickens, Assemblyman Charles Barron. Um, man, it's, it's been a few people um, off the top of the head. Those are the main ones that I can remember right now. Um, we, I thank everybody who provided a support letter, everybody who signed the petitions, everybody who suggested other people sign petitions, everybody who pushed it online, everybody who pushed it on social media, everybody that, you know, like let other people know about the events that was coming up or the meetings that were coming up. Everything played a part in getting this done. Everything played a part in it being a success. So we thank everybody. And, you know, that's where it's at. Thank you. As a person who has had relationships with a lot of these individuals that you have mentioned, I would like personally, on behalf of individuals such as myself who who are grateful to see this particular achievement occur. I personally would like to thank um, Councilman Bill Perkins and Community Board 10 for uh, being instrumental in making this happen. And Assemblyman Charles Barron for showing um, 
Brother Malachi the way. And also, I wanted to send a special tribute to Abu Badika Sonny Carson for being the one who inspired the determined idea to begin with. Um, this has been the 5% Agenda. Thank you for bringing us uh, news and word of this history and, and how it came to manifest and uh, giving us food for thought, as Lord Graceful would say, on what the 5% Agenda will be moving forward. And remember, we always keep the best part preserved for ourselves and understand that cipher. Because we are the best part and the cream will always rise. I am Dayson Emanuel of DX21 and this has been the 5% of Agenda. This is Malachi Knowledge God Allah, aka Cause Power Allah. Peace and prosperity. Peace. Feed the babies. Feed the babies. Peace to the nation of gods and earths. If Mega did this.